Okay, when working with blood pythons that are a little bit larger, you want to use similar techniques that you use for the smaller snakes, but um, you want to use a little bit more caution. Right here I've got my two-year-old Borneo short tail python. So what you want to do is when you're working with the snake, you want to look at the snake, see what it's, kind of try and read its body language a little bit, and give it a little bit of a pat just to let them know that you're not feeding them. Especially if you're picking them up out of the cage, I recommend using a hook or um, a high box or something like that to tap the snake to let it know that you're not feeding it. So what you're going to do is you're going to go in, place your hand on the snake, and scoop right around the middle point. And you're going to lift with the rest of the back end up. You're going to try and support as much of the body as you can. With blood pythons, you got to kind of uh, cradle them a little bit so that you're supporting most of their body. Again, the critical thing is to support the lower half of their body. So ideally, you want to be holding it something like this if you can. Or um, another way to hold them is if you can, get them sort of like this. Best way to handle them. You got a little bit more control and it'll let the snake be calm. You want to let them go through your hands. Don't force them to go any place they don't want to. Let them just go through your hands. And if they want to sit still, let them sit still. Blood pythons are not a kind of snake that you want to force to do anything. And the best thing you can do for them is just let them be curious. Let them do what they're going to do. Uh, especially with some of the larger snakes. If you're going to start to piss them off and make them go places they don't want to go. Eventually you're either going to get sprayed, mussed, or you're going to get bit. So, best way to work about it is just let it, the snake go where it wants to. Try and, uh, not coerce, uh, to just move it about as little as needed just to keep it in your range and underneath your control. Again, like I said, the best way to do this <coughs> is to handle it on a couch or on the floor just so that if you need extra room for handling you got it if the snake starts to get away from you you can just set it down and then you can start from the beginning again so what you're going to do is you're going to try and just support as much of the body as you can especially with the larger blood I tell people this but the only way you can really do it is if you handle the snake yourself you're going to want to cradle them kind of it's almost like holding a baby you're going to want to cradle most of the body and hold it up against you uh, it makes the blood python feel more secure. Since they are kind of a little bit bigger body, uh, they really need to feel secure. So the best way to do that is to cradle as much as you can of uh, their of the body, the lower half. With this guy, I handle him all the time, so he's pretty used to being handled out and about and whatnot. But with some of the other bloods that might not get as much handling, especially you want to just be careful. Don't wave anything in front of their face. Uh, don't tap them anywhere near the front of their head or anything like that. Uh, that can make uh, it can scare them, surprise them, and that's when you get bites and things like that. But for the most part, if you just sit like I'm sitting on the floor, you can just let your snake sit right on top of you. Go where they're gonna go. You really don't have to move them all around that too much. You usually can just let them sit right around you. Let them go through your hands like you would any other snake. See. If you let too much of their back end hang down, like I said with the smaller ones, they'll start to flail, especially with the larger ones, since they really need to feel more support because they have more body. So the best thing you can do is just support as much as you can. Like I said, this is the uh, first Borneo short tail that I got. He's just pushing two years now, and he's just under four feet long. He just shed about two weeks ago, so he's looking pretty good. So when you're reading your snake's body language, if you hear them hissing, or if you see that they're starting to get 
nervous or starting to get antsy or things like that, especially just put them away, leave them alone for a little bit, especially since blood pythons are so secretive, they don't like to be out and active a whole lot. So if you see that your snake's starting to get nervous or that if it goes to the bathroom on you or things like that, starts hissing a lot, you want to just leave them alone for a little bit and try handling again. If it starts to bite you, don't, I'd say, if, if, especially if it's a smaller snake, don't just put it away the first time it bites you because then it's going to start to learn that if it bites you, it's going to get put back in its cage. So what you want to do is just handle it throughout that. Don't stress it out too much. Um, don't like deliberately stress it out. Just handle it uh, calm, open hands. Uh, just sitting down on the floor is best. And you can get the snake usually after handling for a couple weeks, couple months. They'll get used to it. And especially as they get older, once they get around this size, they start to calm down a whole lot. They don't want to waste all their energy being angry at you. They might still be hissy and whatnot. But usually, I found that if you handle your snake regularly, they'll usually calm down a whole lot. The worst thing they'll do to you is you'll pee on you. <laughs> That's the thing with bloods. Uh, mine, yeah, if he doesn't like what he's doing or you surprise him too much, he'll pee on you. That's the worst he's going to do to you. But like I said, I just wanted to put these videos out just to show people what I feel is the proper way to handle blood pythons. Because uh, a lot of people don't really know how to go about it since it's a larger bodied snake, but still under the small to medium sized python range for length. Uh, I feel that it's kind of a unique situation and that this might help out a few of those new people who are looking into getting blood pythons or people who have blood pythons still a little bit nervous with handling them. I just like to show my techniques and what I've found to work with my snakes and with some other snakes that I've worked with. Blood pythons when they're young can be a little bit jumpy, a little bit antsy a lot of the time, but as they get older uh, they usually tend to mellow out especially if you work with them on a weekly basis. So if you have a trouble animal, I'd say work with it, persist. Uh, don't stress it out too much. If you notice it's starting to get really stressed out, I'd say put it back, give it a day or two to rest, and then just keep working with it. Blood pythons make really, really awesome captive snakes. And you can see, they're very beautiful, and they can be very rewarding captives.